This is the Crowcast. <laughs> I'm Will. That's Chris. He didn't do the intro for some unknown reason. Today is uh, throw, 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 Throwback Thursday. Chris is just not going to talk, apparently. <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead, Chris. I don't know why I did that. FIPA. FUPA. FUPA. Well, first, shout out to uh, Wow Such Gaming for being on our uh, conversation with the Crowcast last episode. It was a really great episode. He was kind of roboting a little bit, but he'll be on the uh, podcast again uh, on Friday tomorrow. And I won't be cross-eyed, I promise. But it is like, you know, one in the morning, and Will and I are debating <laughs> subjects that have nothing to do with this podcast. So, no. Um, but we are going to be talking about the uh, Protection of the Family Act. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Family Entertainment Protection Act. Okay, you remember, use protection, guys. No, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, you'll end up with a family. <laughs> Whoa. That was good. That was, that was, that was not right. Okay, so the United States Family Entertainment Protection Act, FIPA, was a bill introduced by Senator Hillary Clinton and co-sponsored by Senators Joe Lieberman, Tim Johnson, and Evan Bay on November 29, 2005. The bill bill called for a federal mandate enforcement of the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, Rating Board, ESRB, um, which rates as a rating system for video games in order to protect children from inappropriate content. Kind of like how uh, movies have PG, T for Teen... Those ones make more sense. No, PG 13. Not T for Teen. T for Teen's ESRB. What the heck? Yeah. Uh, but it's a similar system, and that, that's a government agency, I think, that assigns those. But ESRB is not a government entity. It was mm-hmm. created by the video game industry to essentially self police. Yeah. Which is kind of the whole reason why they wanted to do this, I think, was to essentially. Um, I, I guess they assumed ESRB was disenfranchising parents buying games because they were self-policing and maybe not completely uh, valid in their ratings is the the assumption. Yeah, and making. think of like the situation now with loot boxes. Like, it, Thankfully, people are starting to crack down on this now, but uh, again, they were not rating it as like actual like, gambling. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, e-games should have had the adult rating, but continue. But I think the biggest fault in this bill was that FIPA would have imposed fines for selling titles to underage children versus being more hard on the ESRB rating system, which is kind of the opposite of what you want. You don't want to be, like, you know, penalizing retailers for selling games to children, especially if the parents are uh, are there. Because realistically, at the end of the day, the person who has the best interest of the child is the parent or should be the parent. Mm Mm-hmm. And so penalizing the retailer for selling it to a child, yeah, I mean it's not alcohol, you know, yep. it's, it's it's a completely different thing. This is entertainment, you know. If, if you're if you feel your child has the maturity to do something or watch something, that's on you as a parent, versus say, um, the government imposing that upon you, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this yeah. is a, a weird situation to be in where you could find somebody up to $5,000 or 500 hours for selling an adult only a mature game to a 13 year old just yeah especially since it's so mainstream like Fortnite is what uh, is that an E for everyone or is that uh, I don't know what Fortnite's rating is I think it might be E for everyone I don't know or it's a T for teen let's see yes a T for teen it's for violence so Imagine you sell this to a ten-year-old, which, quite frankly, happens a lot. I'm sure, or you, or mm-hmm. you, or it's free to play. Yeah, it's free to play. So how would you even police this? Like if somebody logs into Xbox Games and I'm ten, I download it. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, I, well, I mean, this bill wouldn't. Have, at this time, there weren't really free-to-play games. At least, not very many. I know. So but I'm just saying, like, I'm imagine just the saying, far-reaching like, consequences. Idea would not have aged well with the industry. No, no, it would not have. But the thing is, oh, whoa. Similar bills have passed in some states, such as California, Michigan, and Illinois. Oh, ruled to be unconstitutional. Ah. Oh, Brown versus Entertainment Merchants Association. Good for you. I'm happy to hear mm-hmm. that. So the bill did not become a law, but it was later referred to. Uh, it was referred to the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, and expired at the end of the 109th Congress without further action. So essentially, they just never acted on it. Yeah, I honestly think it's kind of stupid because it's not like you can they don't police like naughty books like if you buy like an adult themed like tech not like porn or something like that but adult themed uh chapter book if there's like violence in the book or something then they don't they don't care if you send that to a kid 
And the same thing with a movie. Have you ever been ID'd for a movie? No. So, like, why would you need to be ID'd well, for a game? Well, at theaters, you, I, have, I was when I was younger, actually. Yeah, for theaters, yeah, but not when you're buying the DVD. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's nothing at the department store that says you can't buy this. Yeah, and the thing is, like, when I've scanned movies, they've never, like, said, like, oh, we got to give your cash- cashier your uh, ID. Like, I remember one time I bought something, like, compressed air or something and i had to get id'd for that <laughs> no what was it to be fair you could air. you could actually hurt yourself pretty hard with compressed air like if you don't know yeah what well you i guess that's sort of my point so you get id for things that actually hurt you <laughs> yeah that's true and i don't know the government hates video games and they're just determined to <laughs> find a way of ruining them the one thing that i do like about this though is that they wanted to review if the esrb actually was doing their job and we can, you know, argue all day or talk about it all day that they really don't. But like <laughs> any other, but like any other sense. thing proposed by the government, it has tons of extra things in there that weren't yeah, necessary. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everything else before that last line. Yeah, exactly. Like, so I think there should be an audit of the SRB and or maybe maybe some kind of an audit performed by the government or something something to, along the lines of like, hey, are you guys actually doing your job? Yeah. And we kind of talked about the ESRB in a previous video. I'll have a card somewhere you can click on it and learn about the esrb a little more but this kind of i think this would have really thrown a wrench into the video game market in 2005 especially because yeah i would not have been able to get halo 2 and i might not be making this podcast right now exactly well the thing is like it would have gotten to the point where that someone some big chain would have gotten fined a couple times like walmart and they would have stopped selling them yeah, I mean, Walmart essentially did that with weapons. They stopped selling like shotguns and stuff because they didn't want to deal with the liability. So um, it's the same idea. They just, you know, one fine too many, and then it takes out a huge chunk of opportunity for people to actually purchase these these titles. Oh yeah, I forgot that one of the reasons this came about was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas hot coffee mod. It wasn't even really part of the game. It was it was just I physically know. on the disc. Well, it's because they don't know what they're doing. No, they're just, these people like they they don't play games. They don't understand it, and they look at like a video, like a ten second clip, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, it's the worst thing ever." Like if you look at anything for ten seconds and take it out of context, it sounds bad. Yeah, when you look at a game like Night Trap, which is comically hilarious at this point in time. And they presented that to Congress, and it made them create the ESRB in the first place. And Nintendo vowed to never have Night Trap on their platform. It's so laughable because it's not even a rated T for Teen game at this point. Yeah, and then now I'm playing Stick of Truth on the Switch, and like the crap that goes on in that game. <laughs> like, how is that on a Nintendo system? But again, like it's my choice to buy that. That you put the rating on on it. So yeah, this is this should be a, an adult only game, and I totally agree with that. Um, and it's then it's up to you to purchase it and uh, deal with whatever you got. Well, you're an adult. You can make that decision now. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I'm glad you recognize that. <laughs> and then again, for kids, the kids aren't buying it themselves really anyway. So it's it's the parent uh, that's doing it, and. You know, you can have the argument that the parent should be more cognizant of what the kid is buying. That you should not be buying Grand Theft Auto for your kid. Um, but, I mean, Halo was fine. My dad went and bought me Halo when I was like eight. You're only fighting <laughs> aliens. All you're killing people. Yeah, that's ex- so. My sister was trying to tell my parents it was too violent, and that's the exact argument I made. I was like, but the blood is purple. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, totally fine. The, the thing, the thing I think is, that's important that everybody forgets is. Um, if you're a parent of children, go and look at the stack of games your kids have. Go to their, like, figure out how to navigate their Xbox, their console, their iPhone, their Android. You have every right to go and do your own audit of your kids' games and figure out what they're playing. And then yeah. make the decision as a parent to either let them play it or not. Like, that, you don't necessarily need the government to tell you how to parent your child yes, when you it do. comes to gaming. That, that's, big, that's Big Daddy. I'm just saying, like, does this bill need to exist? Like, if I decide my kid can play something, my kid can play it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, just because, like, I, know I this definitely think highly regulated, party. highly regulated. Though, if there is a quote unquote adults only game, they should not be allowed to sell that to children. <laughs> that is for sure. No. I mean, they should at least question it. 
You really it's want like, leisure suit? If your parent <laughs> comes up and is like, "Are you sure you want to buy this for your kid?" Like this is pretty pretty raunchy. Well, adults only games are usually uh, of the prawn um, variety, so I don't believe that's even legal to sell to children. Prawn variety? What do they mean? P O R N. Oh, okay. You say it differently uh, so YouTube so, yeah. censor doesn't come out at you on it. Yeah, yeah. The um, South Park is not adults only, it, but it, it might actually be. It, there are some scenes that could probably be in that category. <laughs> Maybe the the graphic fidelity isn't high enough. For I know either. it's like little paper cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> but the way I look at it is, um, yeah, adults only because of the uh, content in the adults only games. Yeah, those I don't even think you can buy those at retail uh, stores. I don't know if I've ever seen one before. The only one I've ever heard of, and it's been highly covered on YouTube, is the guy game. I mm, think that yeah. one is adults only, I think. Yeah, well, there's a reason for that. We don't need to discuss that right now. <laughs> but if it's a game like that, children should not have access to it at all. Because it's, it should be 18+. Plus, and that is because yeah. of the content. And it, there is similar sanctions across the board for all entertainment media. I'm sure everybody yeah. would agree with that. Like That's literally the law. Well, in that situation, if you're buying an adult-only game, just have it where the cash register immediately asks you for your ID. Like the yeah. when I did it for the... I still think FIPA's the right way. Yeah, whereas... So that's a quick way of doing it. And now you... It's hard to fake IDs for that because they scan it to make sure it's a real one. And, um, yeah, there you go. And then everything else is like, you know, if you're buying it, then that's on you. Yeah. Yep. Yep, I definitely don't need Brother Bear telling me what I can and can't buy for my children. Yep. And television Amico all the way. <laughs> there you go, Tommy. <laughs> yep, can't get through a week without mentioning it at least once, right? Yeah, but he won't watch this video, so it's all good. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank God FIPA didn't pass. Yep. As always, I'm Chris. And I'm um, Will. This segment will never air. <laughs> we will see you. On the next cast. Bye, guys.